Hey Noah. How are you? You're good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, you look very cozy. <laughs> I have uh, my bed in my hotel. Uh, we're about to leave Detroit. And then where do you go from Detroit? Uh, I'm going back to London. Been been in Detroit for about I think two months now. Wow. So I'm excited to get back home, see my friends, and you know, <laughs> chill out for Christmas. Um, and hopefully next year is better than this one. <laughs> so how did, how did you shoot for two months? I know you had to do quarantine in your hotel for two weeks. Yeah, well, basically, um, they originally, it was kind of the shooting started a lot earlier. Um, so we got this like permit to come out here um, earlier and then they pushed the shooting back and me and my mom were like listen it's all looking a bit you know we really want to shoot this movie so we're just gonna um you know we're just gonna get out there and and then once we're out there we know that we're kind of gonna be able to do it so we got out there and then we had like four weeks of quarantine um and then until kind of everyone else arrived and things started to happen and what was it like filming a set that has to, you know, masks and hazmat suits and spray and disinfectant? It's so interesting, like, because uh, obviously I've met loads of new people on this job and I only know them from half of their face. And I remember, so, I, we, you know, we went, uh, I think at, at lunchtime, obviously you can't have your mask on. So I went to lunch with, uh, you know, the person that does my hair and I saw them take off their mask and they look so different uh, <laughs> without their mask. It's so weird. It's like, com like completely different. Um, and so that's really strange. And the masks are so irritating, man. Um, and they're like, you know, I'm kind of lucky as an actor because obviously once I'm on set, I'm allowed to take it off and, you know, you can't have a mask on while shooting. Um, but yeah, so it's been good for me. But, you know, you see everyone else, all of the crew, and they're having to wear that all day. You know, everyone's been a proper trooper on, on this one with the whole PPE thing. Were they testing you like crazy every other day? I know most sets, it's like every other day. Yeah, I've had a lot of sticks shoved down my throat. <laughs> it's uh, not been fun. But, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. And it's a Steven Soderbergh movie. Yeah, man. Yeah. How wild is that? That it's, he's awesome, man. Like he, um, before shooting, he called me just like check in and everything. We had like a, a two hour chat, you know, and it, it started on the, on the movie and it just went to like, you know, people in general, movies in general, filming. I, I shot my first movie over the, over the summer and we were talking about that and, uh, yeah, he's just, he's such a wise man. He, you know, I definitely, he's, would call him a genius in what he does and in lots of other things too. He definitely, you know, knows a lot of stuff. I mean, it's pretty amazing in your, in your short career, your short life, you have had these mentors. I mean, is there any project that you don't have one of the geniuses of Hollywood on that project? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I look back at like the past few years and the people that I've had the opportunity to talk to, to like, you know, learn from. I mean, honestly, I, in terms of having a teaching in this business, being on the sets that I've been on has been so like has been all I've needed just watching and listening um, on all of these sets is, is honestly all I've needed to, to kind of learn about this industry and learn about acting and directing and, you know, all of the aspects of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, cause you know, I've, I've worked with people at the top of their game and <laughs> kind of thrown in the deep end a little bit, but, and that's the only way you learn how to swim. Um, right. yeah. How how has the last year, I mean, the last time I saw you, you were in the craziness of award season. It's just nonstop, nonstop. Obviously, we go into quarantine, but how has your life, 
I mean, it's weird to ask people how their life has changed in the last year because there is this pandemic going on. But yeah. professionally, how wild has it been for you for the last year? Um, it's been it's been really it's, it's been pretty crazy. Obviously, the whole pandemic thing. But I've you know I've been I've got big exams this year, so I've been focusing a lot on school since kind of award season, and then obviously because I'm used to kind of online school and uh, doing all my all on my computer when we when we were in quarantine, I, I was on it immediately. And I, you know, was already on Google Classroom, was already in contact with all my teachers from going away previously. So it was almost like really easy to, for me. And I know a lot of people who it was hard for, and, you know, that was an advantage for me actually. And um, also it's been, it had been such a crazy year that it was almost like a nice chilled gap where I could just right. take a breath, um, yeah. And, and actually, you know, it's been, it's been really great, uh, because we've been kind of like finding stuff, finding projects, discovering, like I have, I've had so many zooms over quarantine with incredible people because what, you know, what else, um, <laughs> what else is there to do, um, than talk and, and come up with ideas and be creative. So for me, I know a lot of people have been through a tough time, but I try and look at it positively. And it's, it's, you know, it's been, I definitely need to get out of it. It definitely needs to stop now, but it's been right. good. It's been a good time for me, you know? So the undoing. Getting fixed up. I'll fix this. Before yeah. we talk about it, I have not seen the last episode. Okay. So you cannot say certain things because you cannot. My husband and I binged the first five in one weekend. Okay, cool. It's so awesome and just, it just, you know, it captured our imagination. It, we were in it. What is it like the first day on set, you walk on set and there's Nicole Kidman playing your mom. Uh, I, I the first time I kind of met them all was at the read through, which was pretty cool because it was, you know, sometimes you have sets where you just kind of get on there. It's not really a read through. Um, and you just kind of start working, start rehearsing, but Susanna really wanted to get everyone together in a room and like read through the whole thing. And, uh, I hadn't read episode six as well. Um, and we read episode six as a cast, all not knowing what was going to happen. Um, so that was pretty insane. I loved, like, that was a really cool experience. And it, it just, it just, I don't know what it feels like. It's, it's so surreal, but kind of normal at the same time. Um, because they're all people, like incredible people, but they're just people doing their job. And, you know, you just kind of got to do your job too. Um, and but yeah, it's definitely it was a crazy set to be on. Uh, but it was nice to have Susanna, you know, because I worked with her on the night manager before, so I knew her already. I kind of knew her way of working, um, and that was really helpful. And she really made me feel, you know, secure and safe, and feel free to to explore my character. Did you get to spend time with Nicole and Hugh? to sort of form that relationship, that kind of parental bond? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, after the read through, we kind of, we had a few meals and different things. It was just, it was just talking. I mean, Susanna really gives us the space to just talk and, and honestly, with, the, with this specific, you know, project, talking was the best way to prepare and forming a relationship was the best way to, mm -hmm. to prepare because from episode one, I mean, it's, you kind of thrown in the deep end. Uh, you kind of, it, it, it gets dark quickly. So to have that bond before we started shooting was, you know, very good and very helpful. How much do you, when you're on a set like that or any of your sets, you know, you're young, so I'm sure people say to you, like, remember these times, remember these times, you should remember that. How much do you, are there times where you sit back and be like, Nicole just did that, or Hugh just did that, and I should learn from them and hold on to that? 
it's it's weird actually because um a lot of my projects i almost kind of don't remember like mm-hmm. honey boy was a big one for me where i don't remember the shooting i remember all the you know i remember up to when we started and when we finished and i kind of remember various parts of it but it it all kind of merges together um and it's kind of the same with everything I, you kind of dive into a character and you get lost in there which i love um but i come out of it knowing so much more and have having learned so much and there's not specific things that i could have pinned like that was a moment that you know made me think of this which taught me this uh, it's like i just come out of it as a better actor as a better human being because of these people because of just watching listening and um being around the energy that is on set because you could just be around that energy and learn so much let's talk about um the accent work you didn't have to really you know you had to get that american sort of new yorker how yeah. tough is that for you or is it easy um shout out to liz himmelstein my my favorite human being on the planet and also my kind of dialect coach over the past few years uh she's actually works with nicole as well which is great mm-hmm. so we both um we both kind of we all kind of got together we had that connection um and so she's great i mean for me now uh i've done it a fair few times um this this accent and, and if you know me if you're american and you know me i i i do kind of go into the accent whenever i'm talking to to americans just because i've learned that flow that rhythm so much that when someone does that to me like communicates in that way i have to respond because although it's the same words it's a different language in a way because mm-hmm. of how you know how it, it is expressed so for me i i always so that was kind of practice to me because there were a lot of americans on set um but liz yeah helped me kind of go through the script and not only is she um not only is she kind of a a dialect coach but she finds the emotion through the dialect uh which is something you don't get um and it's more it's more than just like oh you say this this way it's like you, we find the scenes together which is it which is really kind of spiritual and crazy um but yeah she's she's always there if i'm confused on a line or but i'm getting good at it now it's definitely it could definitely put it on my cv i could do a pretty <laughs> what was the hardest scene for you to shoot for the undoing and if it's in episode 6 don't tell me okay um i did probably is in episode 6 so i'm not going to say that one um for me the man there was a funny scene where i had to play the violin and uh i had learned the violin and uh shout out to my teacher kara she was amazing um but she kind of came every day we did you know i i worked hard and i could play a hold a tune on a violin but anyway i got to set it was the first time i had told everyone i'd been like yeah i can play the violin now and they were like whoa that's sick um so i got on set i picked up the violin and i was like getting ready and it like action and i was playing i played the violin and it was sounded horrible <laughs> no like i mean like horrible <laughs> like you know like j- just everything was wrong um and it threw me off completely and then all the crew, like all my friends in the crew were like you said you could play the violin right <laughs> um and i was like yeah and it turns out that the violin was out of tune um and i didn't know how to tune it so and i didn't even test it beforehand um but yeah that was it's hard because you know i had a short amount of time to learn the violin and then uh you know when i was on set playing the violin i also had to focus on acting and being in my character but also playing the violin and it was like kind of multitasking so that was tricky um i'm sh- you might hear my dogs barking in the background ignore them um you might i'm sure people have said to you you have to keep a level head in this business you're 15 years old you know your world is not like most 15 year olds 
how are you keeping your head? Le how are you keeping level headed? I know every time I saw you on a carpet, you were cool, you were collected. I ain't feeling that when I'm on the red carpet, but <laughs> I'm glad I look like that. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's hard in in the sense that like there's so much crazy stuff, crazy opportunities that I've been lucky enough to have uh, through kind of my journey. Um, and you, you know, you could get lost. It's this industry is a very easy place to just get lost in and, um, you know, enveloped by and, and, um, it's, yeah. So for me, it's kind of keeping those, those close, close friends, close family, you know, you know keeping them and having a place to go back to where you can talk to people and you're not going to have to worry about it getting out somewhere or someone videoing you, you know, you have people that you can trust because, you know, there's a lot of people out there who look like you can trust them and they'll just, you know, they'll ruin your career in a day. And it's happened to a lot of people and you've got to be wary of that. And so for me, having people that I can trust has been a huge thing for me and I've tried so hard and that's why I've kind of stayed in school. I've stayed in England. You know, I've, I've tried to have, because I've, I've separated almost my career, which is mainly in America. I shoot a lot in America. And then I get to go back to England, go back to my home and have a place there to, uh, to, to be. And so, yeah, that's, I say that's kind of, so are you more of an actor who wants Star Wars or do you want Marvel? Do you want to be a superhero Neither. or do you want to be out in Neither. space? I want, Neither. I want like Fargo. I want uh, Magnolia. I want uh, the Deer Hunter. I want that Whoa. shit. I'm like, I can't, I can't, nah. I love Marvel. I love Star Wars. <laughs> Great movies, but not for me as an actor. Because I imagine those offers are going to start coming in if they haven't already. <laughs> I mean, I mean, listen, like, great. And to be honest, I don't. I always say, if I'm going to be in a movie like that, I have to be a villain and I have to die. And that is like uh, that. I'll be in a Marvel movie if that's the case. You're too dark for 15 years old. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, I'm a bit morbid. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. No, I like it. Um, what have you been binging while you were in quarantine? What have you been watching? Uh, I, I just started binging South Park, man. That's and I've got a long <laughs> way to go. I've got so much of that. Um, but I've I've been binging a lot of movies. Uh, I've been watching. Yeah, I've been watching too many like classic movies because I. It's just, and also recently, uh, my mom's kind of said, yeah, you can watch anything pretty much now, mm. which, which I'm like, yeah, because there's so many <laughs> movies that I've grown up, you know, wishing that I could see and my mom being like, no. And so finally, I've been able to watch them, uh, which is so exciting. And, and yeah, and also recently, I've learned, a, you know, I've got to the age now where I can respect my craft and respect movie making um because i like when i was a kid movies affected me but i couldn't respect them as movies necessarily because it just mm -hmm. i didn't know enough about them i didn't know about directing shooting but now like i can see movies i can see how they impact me i can talk about them properly without sounding like a complete fool like i can talk about aspects of them so yeah i've been getting into movies pretty much so what's the latest one you watched that just blew your mind that blew my mind um ooh, that's a good question i watched uh as i as i mentioned before the deer hunter was a Oof. one because it my I, every time i asked my mom i was like what's your favorite movie she always comes out with the straight answer she's like the deer hunter and i'm like okay i want to see that one she's like no <laughs> you are not watching that one. I'm like, okay. And this time she was like, how about we watch Deer Hunter? I was like, okay, cool. And so we watched it and I, I remember just ending it. My mom turned TV off and I just started sobbing. Like just, really? and it went on for like 20 minutes. And um, 
it just had such a huge impact on me and you know i I'd, I'd, I'd not seen a movie like that like since full metal jacket that kind of you know, war sort of ptsd mm-hmm. movie um so yeah that's the the biggest one uh but i've seen so many awesome ones recently oh this was great it was good seeing you even it's on, on zoom I'm glad yeah. you're doing well. I'm glad you're safe and healthy. Yeah, please, um, man. I'm so, so great to see you.